Hi guys, in a previous video, I showed you how to build web applications using Python and just Python, no frameworks were required. And one thing that was required was some sort of server software uh, for, you, for, for you to be able to run your Python scripts, you know, as web applications. Um, what I used in that previous video was XAMPP, which is sort of a software which, um, with which you can, you know, run a web server on your local machine. And the link to that, by the way, the link to that video is in the description below. And what you had, what, what you had to do is like you get yourself XAMPP, install Python uh, in, 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 in XAMPP, and basically then, uh, you know, you can, you'd have to do some slight modifications in, in XAMPP. Everything is described in that video. And then in your Python, you'd also have to do some slight modifications, for, uh, among others, first of all, You'd have to <clears throat> um, have a sort of a, a path to your Python executable in the first line, uh, preceded by a hashtag and exclamation mark. Then before printing any content, you'd have to have this print statement, which ensures that any subsequent print statements are uh, a text HTML, and then you can print anything. And that's basically the result we had um, uh, out of that. So basically here you can see I'm able to print my Python script online in the browser. Uh, albeit in this case on a local host, but that if, like I said, if you have some sort of web server, a functioning web, web server which has Python installed, or if not, just install Python on it, and you'll be able to do that on your on your web server. Right. Now, in this video, we're going to take that a step further. I'm going to show you how to build uh, web APIs using Python and nothing but Python. Now. What is a web API? Well, a web API is basically a sort of a, a Python software or, or software in this case, which takes in uh, parameters via the internet and produces the required output. Now, let's start simple. Let me start with a very simple function. And this is my function. It's called greeter, takes in a name and surname. And what it does, it returns, hello, whatever your name is, how are you? And let me just reduce the window again because, you know, we don't need to see the whole thing. Right. And now I can just remove that. And let's print out that output of the function. Print greeter and then supply my function with the, with the two parameters. Let's say Mike <clears throat> and Smith. Right. And save that. And now if I run it, you see, there's my function outputting, hello, Mike Smith, how are you? What it does, it takes in the name surname, like I said, and then it capitalizes the first letter of the name and the first letter of the surname and adds, uh, how are you? So, and then we have this output. Great. Now, uh, how, does an, how does a web API function? Uh, let me again reduce this a bit because I need that. And let's see the way a uh, web application functions a uh, web api functions is like that it takes in it's um uh, it takes in a query and then what it, you know what let me put it to you this way in the, here i supplied mike and smith in the python script i don't want to do that i want to have the name and surname supplied via the web so in, in the form like this so it have like name is equal to uh, you know Barry and surname is equal to Brown. So, and what I want then is for the Python script is going to take the name and surname via the browser, via the link, and what it's going to do is take these, parse that, and then, you know, produce the output, hello, Barry Brown, how are you? Now, how do I go about this? Well, let's start off. First of all, I need to import two libraries. First of all, would be import OS. And the second one is import URL lib and uh, parse. Right. And oops, forgot the space here. Right. So that's the first thing I got to do. And then now these two would enable me to read whatever that query string is and let's let's take a look at how that query string looks like or what it looks like so let's say um, send query 
and that send query is equal to OS dot environment and basically query string. Query string is written all caps because that's sort of a, a key in uh, OS environment and save that and let me print the send query. Oops. Right. Let's so there's my query and you see now it is able to read anything after the question mark and it tells me name is Barry and surname is Brown. So I'm now able to read whatever is sent via the browser. Now the next step is I need to parse it. Now there are multiple ways of doing it. What well, multiple ways of doing it? One thing is now you can take that string and parse it somehow to get that berry and that brown out of it, and then supply that to your function. Uh, but you know, if you do that manually, it's get, it's get it could get really tedious if you have like uh, you know twenty or thirty parameters, which is typical in web API, uh, web APIs. So uh, what I'm gonna do here, I'm going to basically create a dictionary query dict let's call it you can call it whatever you want but i'm just going to call it query dict and then that's why i need my url lib parse and then what i'm going to do is parse the query string and then what i'm going to do is supply it with the query string well i could either supply it with this here just copy that in here you know so i wouldn't need that uh, send query variable or i can just supply with a send query variable but you know i don't need that send query variable just for, for demonstration purposes so i'm just going to take that off right uh, now i've got all that query parsed as a dictionary and let's look let's see how that looks so query uh, dict oh wait a minute let's, let's convert it to a string query Bit. save it and let's run the uh, application here and you see now what I have now is a dictionary with the first key is called name it has Barry and the second key is called surname and has Brown so you know I'm nearly there now I have I'm able to not only take in a query string but I'm able to parse it as a dictionary and you know I'm able now basically theoretically able to supply Barry and Brown to my function for it to be able to produce the required output right now before that I need to get rid of uh, you know that uh, bracket and and uh, single quote at the beginning and single quote and bracket at the end of each of those values so the way you do that is um, <clears throat> basically let's go like this and I say input name, create a variable called input name, and that input name takes in query dict, takes in the name from query dict, and what it does, it just takes off the first two uh, characters and the last two. That's, that's the way you do it in Python. Uh, that one removes the first two, i.e., um, you know, the that curly that bracket and uh, the single quote and that one removes uh, that minus two would remove that single quote and curly bracket at the end and i would do the same thing with the surname uh, surname and surname right and now i have i'm ready to have to call my functions but first of all no let's let's call the function immediately so what i'm doing here i'm going to greeter and now what i'm supplying greeter with is basically input name and input surname right another thing what i'd like to show in this case not necessary but you know i what i would like i would like to make sure that these are strings so what i do is like string that you know and just convert it because sometimes you never know what kind of input you have so basically converting it to a string you're sure that I, these are strings save it and now what i should have i should have the output of my function in here 
And let's go return. Oh, I got an error somewhere. Let's see where it is. Oh, I got the word error is I misspelled surname. It, the R is missing here. So that's why I don't have a, I don't, I'm supplying a parameter called suname. And, uh, you know, I am asking for a surname and that doesn't exist. So what I have to do here is surname and the thing would work. So now you see it is working perfectly. I have, I have uh, converted my Python script into a, into a web API, which is able to take in inputs via the web. So, you know, I can supply with any name I want right now. Uh, let's say Alice. Green and return and now it, and now it, what it does is say hello Alice Green how are you so here you can see the process is very simple what you need is that those two libraries and then you are able to get uh, your uh, query string and then what you have to do is parse that query string into a dictionary because that's, that would simplify things enormously especially if you, if your query string has like you know, gazillions of um, of, it, of parameters. You have the best thing is to have these parameters in a dictionary with each parameter name. I.e., name would be the key, and then the the value would be whatever that is, and then that would be the second key in that dictionary, and that would be the second value, and so on. And then obviously, what you have to do is take off those. Um, uh, you know, each each value is. Uh, preceded by a sort of a bracket and a, and a single quote and you know it's it's being at the end it also has a, a single quote and a bracket you got to remove these and once you have your individual per, uh, values uh, parsed out of that query then you can you know do whatever with them whatever you want in this case we send them to our function and our function is producing that output so now anybody can send anything, uh, basically any name to to uh, to that to that function and to that to that uh, web API, and it just produced that output that you required. And as you see here, we didn't use anything but Python. And obviously, the web server, you know, for us to be able to host that Python online.